let us come let us adore you kneel down before you kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship
gather together and glorify and magnify your name. You've been so good to us, my Father. We can't help but give you thanks and glory and honor. We praise you this morning, Lord, for your blessing and for your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you would please uh, continue to guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Bless this church, my Father. Bless any church doors that open in your name. Yes, Lord. Help us to lift you up and show forth your glory. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. We don't need a whole crowd of people, do we? Amen. We Amen. need to know the Lord Jesus. Amen. He's the one that's brought us all this way. That's right. Yes, he did. Thank you, man. Bless his name for it. Now we're going to continue as we have a welcome in our announcement by Sister Erica Gillis. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord is and let us exalt his name together. On behalf of the Emmanuel Crowley Baptist Church, we welcome all of our members and friends to our worship services this morning. We welcome those out there in virtual land. We just want you to know that you are welcome here uh, in person and at virtually anytime you feel the Lord lays upon your heart. So just know that you are always welcome here at Emmanuel. Amen. Um, I'm going to read, we have inserted today's uh, bulletin, and it's honoring. Uh, Reverend, or Pastor Reverend Isaac Flippin. Pastor Flippin would have been 100 years old on November 4th of this past week. And so I'm going to read the insert in today's bulletin to share it with all of you. Uh, his 100th anniversary uh, board uh, of this week. Pastor I Reverend Isaac H. Flippin was born in Boynton, Oklahoma, November 4th, 1921. He served in the armed services during the Second World War, and in 1942, he married his high school sweetheart, Eva Lou Rambo. God led the Flippins to San Francisco, and Reverend Flippin took a job with Muni and worked there for 45 years. Reverend Isaac H. Flippin graduated from Con Conroe College in 1962 and received a certificate of ordination in 1966. He served as an associate minister of the First Friendship Institutional Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend E. Leroy Gaines. Oh, <laughs> I know, Reverend Gaines was a minister here. <laughs> uh, I know, right? I'm going to start that sentence over. It says, he served as an associate minister of the First Friendship Institutional Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend E. Leroy Evans. He also served as a radio Bible study program host. Pastor Flippin had a heart and love for people to share the gospel. And in 1959, he organized the Pearl Gate Tabernacle Baptist Church, which was located at 164 6th Street. And in 1969, the church moved to 19 Baby. Over the years, the pastor opened his heart to the world and his church home to other ministries, including Grace Baptist Church, Emmanuel Baptist Church, and Hosanna Ministries. He was a member of the Masonic Order of Masons, a patron for Princess, Princess Zora Chapter 70 OES, and first vice president emeritus of the Bayview, did I say that right? of the Bayview Baptist Ministers Fellowship. Pastor Flippin left this life in 2005 for a richer and more rewarding one. He also left for those of us who continue to labor an amazing example of legacy, leadership, commitment, and faithfulness. Amen. And today um, we give honor to the late Pastor Isaac Flippin. Amen. 
We ask that you continue to uh, pray. We'd like to first say happy birthday to all those who are celebrating birthdays this month. Um, if the birthday list is in the bulletin, and we ask that you continue to pray for those who are on our sick and shut-in list. We ask that you pray for Sister Gillies and Sister Love who are under the weather this morning. But we know they are out there in virtual land watching us. Um, so we ask that you continue to pray for Sister Eugene Gates and for all the others who are listed on our sick and prayer list. Uh, we ask that you continue to pray for, for us all that God may keep us safe during this pandemic and that God will continue to bless and keep us. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let us all say amen. Amen. Thanks, Sister, Sister Gillies, for making the announcement. I thought she was going to be preaching that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all, always happy to have her. <laughs> thank you. We'd like to thank Deacon Love. Uh, I guess he was the one that brought, put this in the program. Amen. So we Amen. thank him for thanking them for that and having it. Now we will continue our worship services. We're going to ask uh, the officers to come that we may uh, receive the offering. Amen. We ask the officers to come. We thank God for all of you that are here. And we thank God for your, for your presence. God is good all the time. Amen. You're now in the hands of our officers.
Reverend Dante Pope, if he would come and offer the prayers for the sick and the needy, Amen. and all of us. This is our altar call period, and we ask you to stand, if you will, uh, as Reverend Dante comes with our altar call prayers. Thank God that he seems to be at ease now for a while. And we 
thank God for him as he stands in the face of God. Let us give him some praise. Let the choir sing a song, the voice you hear will be better of Pastor Dominique Hamlet. Thank you, the choir.
speaks to us as follows. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, 
but the things which are not seen are eternal. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his most precious word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to use that scripture this morning to speak to you using the subject, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Did anyone come here today hoping, praying, longing for someone to sing something? Longing for someone to pray something or longing for me to preach something that will strip away all of your hope? Did anyone come here today hoping to be discouraged? Did anyone come here today hoping that someone would knock all the wind out of your sails? The question is no. Nobody came here this morning hoping that somebody will hurt their souls, yeah. hurt their feelings, yeah. or hurt their motivation for serving the Lord. We came here looking for the very opposite. We came here this morning looking to be encouraged, seeking for some hope, desiring to be motivated to do greater things in the Lord. We came here this morning looking for a little bit of help. Amen. And if I told you there was a secret that will allow you to have hope in this world, uh -huh. would you want to know what that secret is? Yes. For we live in a world that is filled with hopelessness, filled with discouragement, yes. Yes. filled yes. with defeat. And if I told you that that new way that you can live your life every single day, and not lose heart. Would you refuse to hear what thus said the Lord? Yes, and I come out here to let somebody know to don't lose heart. Yes, no matter what you may be going through in life, don't lose heart. Yes, yes. Have sickness in your body, don't lose heart. For I come to tell you, God's got it. Yes, you yes, have discouragement yes, in your mind, yes. don't lose heart. For God, God, have troubles in your home. Don't lose heart. For God, God, if you have some medical issues, don't lose heart. God, God, and as long as you know that you are a child of God, and as long as you know that God is on the throne, you know that God has got it just for you. No matter how hard the situation. God has it handled. No matter how rough the climb may be, God's got it handled. No matter how rough in the road you may think that it's the end of the road for you, just bring it over to Jesus and know that he's got it. Is there anybody here who can give God a wave offering and say, I will not lose hope. I will not lose faith. For I know that if God is in my life, everything will be all right. In this text this morning, Paul tells us that he has found the secret to stay encouraged in the Lord. In verse number 16, Paul says, For which cause we faint not. Literally, he's saying, We do not lose heart. Paul knows the secret to not losing heart, and he shares that secret with us in this passage. And I want to spend our time in these verses today, and I want to tell you about the fact that as long as we are in the Word of God, as long as we're in the will of God, and as long as we lean on His everlasting arms, we have no reason to lose heart. There are some truths in these verses that will help us to faint not, even when life is at its most discouraging moments. And the first thing that we see in our text is an incredible statement. In verse 16, Paul says, for which cause we faint not. And that is an amazing statement. For the word faint refers to a failing of the heart. 
So the phrase can be read this way. We do not lose heart. Paul is telling us that regardless of what comes on his way, he does not give up. He does not give in. He does not give out. He does not lose heart. And how many of you know that it is so easy to lose heart in this world that we live in? It is so easy to come to a place where you are ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to lay down your burdens. And you're ready to just quit. And it seems to me just from reading what the Bible says about the life of Paul that it would have been easy for Paul to just lose heart. But he says, we faint not. And that little phrase is in the present tense and in an active voice, which means that Paul is saying, I never lose heart. He isn't bragging about it. He is just making a simple statement of fact that Paul had discovered a spiritual secret that enabled him to be encouraged even in the midst of circumstances that would discourage anybody else. Paul's life wasn't anything but easy. Consider two passages that speak of a problem Paul was forced to endure. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despair even our life. He also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 29, Are they ministers of Christ? I am more and in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in the journeyings often, in perils of waters, in Perils of robbers, and perils by my own countrymen, and perils by the heathen, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils amongst false brethren, and weariness, and painfulness, and watchings often, and hunger, and, and thirst, and fastings often, and cold, and, and nakedness, and besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches who is weak, and I am not weak, who is offended, and I burn not, yet in spite of all those trials tribulations and burdens, Paul is able to say, I never lose heart is there anybody here who can echo that statement? Is there anybody here who can declare, who can testify? I never get discouraged. I never want to give up. I'm always encouraged. I'm always excited. I'm always energized about my life and in my walk with the Lord. Why? Because I understand that the Lord is always with me. I understand that the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me. I understand that as long as I have him in my life, everything will be all right. Yes, we all stumble from discouragement to discouragement. Yes, we all want to quit from time to time. We all want to just stop and give no more because we feel that we have given all that we can already give. Yeah, yeah. Most of us are like David who said in Psalms 55 and 6, and I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, yeah, yeah. for then would I fly away and be at rest. Yeah, yeah. And if we would be honest, we would all have to admit that we, if we could at times just yeah. sprout a pair of wings yeah. and fly away from all of our troubles, yeah 
fly away from all of our trials. Fly away from all of our tribulations. I know that we would do it in the drop of a hat. But while there are times when leaving troubles and afflictions behind seems like the best option, I am far more interested in reaching the place where I can say what Paul said. When he says, I think not, I do not lose heart. And I believe that place is available to everyone who is God's child. I believe that that place is available for you and for me. As long as we trust in the Lord, as long as we keep him first in our lives, we can declare, I will not faint. I will not lose heart. For God is right there with me. In our text, we see an incredible statement. But we also see a familiar struggle. As I have already said, it is so easy to lose heart when you're going through trials and tribulations. And the reason it is so easy is found in verse number 16. For Paul identifies a common struggle that we all face in our lives. Paul says, though our outward man perish. And the reason it's so easy for us to lose heart is that the outward man is perishing. The outer man refers to the fleshly part of us. It encompasses both our body and our mind. The results of aging in the body and sin in the mind conspire to strip away our joy, to strip away our hope, to strip away our peace of heart and our peace of mind. And we are told here that the outer man is constantly perishing. The word perish means to rot, to ruin, to corrupt, and to be destroyed. And every single day of our lives, the outer man is being destroyed by the pain, the problems, the burdens, and the trials that are constantly thrown our way. And the reason we are so prone to lose heart is because our outer man is constantly being destroyed. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer man, our body, our brain, our lungs, our liver, our heart, our muscles, and our bones are wasting away, being destroyed, being eaten away, being capsized, being consumed, and are being wiped out. We will not lose heart because of the simple fact that we know who created us. We know who has us in our hands. We know who is able to keep us day in and day out. Is there anybody here who can testify? I know it wasn't me who woke me up this morning. It wasn't the alarm clock that woke me up. But it was the touch of the finger of love that woke me up this morning. Many people wanted to get up, but they just could not. But God was so good. God was so gracious. God was so loving that he woke us up this morning. Is there anybody here who can thank God that you are here all today? Not by your strength, not by your might. But you are here today because God kept you. Is there anybody here who can declare, I thank the Lord all today? Because he's there with you. Not only do we have to deal with the outer man, we also have to deal with the inner man. We have to deal with the things that we struggle with on a daily basis. Addictions in our minds. Bad habits that are in our hearts. Unforgiveness and unwanting to let go of the hurt and the pain that has happened to us in our lives. I come to tell you that if you give that over to the Lord, you will find peace in your heart. You will find peace in your mind. And you'll be able to declare the Lord is constantly with me. I am his child and he will fight my battles. Is there anybody here who knows that the Lord will fight your battles? No matter how hard times will be, the Lord will fight your battles. 
man. No matter how hard the addiction may have a hold on you, you know that the Lord will fight your battles. No matter how painful the memories may be, the Lord will fight your battles. If you just give it over to Him, we know that He will make everything all right. We see an incredible statement in a familiar struggle. And finally, we see a wonderful secret. What we need, what I need, is to come to the place where Paul came to. I want to reach the place where, though our outer man perish, Paul says, I faint not. I want to come to the place where even though I am attacked from without and from within, I can declare I do not lose heart. I want to come to the place where I don't lose heart regardless of what is going on around me or what is going on within me. I can declare that God, if God is for me, who can be against me? And this text helps us do that very thing. For in these verses, Paul shares his secret of keeping heart even when life turns against him. He says in verse number 16, we are given fresh strength every single day. Paul reminds us that while the outward man is perishing, the inward man is renewed day by day. The natural man, which includes a body and a mind, is dying every single day. But every single day, our inner man is being renewed. Every single day, even though we endure the problems that are given to us by this world, the inner man is being renewed every single morning. The word renew means to renovate. And every day, the inner man is given new strength to face the trials of the day. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6 and 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. So while every day brings with it its unique problems, every day also comes with its own measure of grace from the hands of the Lord. The Lord promises us in Lamentations 3, 21. He says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. The Lord promises in Deuteronomy chapter 33 as thy days so shall thy strength be. The Lord promises in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 for he says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I come to tell you that the inner man is renewed every single day. But we need to understand that this is not a one-time drink, but the Lord is offering us a fountain from which we can drink over and over again every single day of our lives. And that we are renewed by fresh fuel. We are renewed by fresh food because that is what the God that we serve offers to us on a daily basis. That's why we need to feed on the word of God every single day. That's why we need to pray to the Father every single day. That's why we need to fellowship with the saints every single day. We're going to church once a week or once a month will not get the job done. You need a fresh supply every single day of your lives. And if God is able and loving enough to give it to us, we ought to take advantage and say, Lord, whatever you have for me, Lord, give it to me. So I may do no way. We are given fresh strength every single day. But also it tells us in verse 17 that nothing we face in this life will last forever. Notice the 
language that Paul uses here. He says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. We must understand that it never feels light. And it never seems like what we're going through is over in a moment. The word affliction refers to tribulation, trouble, pressure. The word light means easy. So here Paul says that the pressure he is under is easy for him. Now this is not how Paul described his troubles earlier in this book. For he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8, For we would not have you ignorant of our troubles that has come to us in our lives. And in that verse Paul tells us that his troubles were more than he could handle. He said they pushed him beyond his natural boundaries. It was literally more than he could take. But now he comes back and tells us that the things that he went through were light. Meaning they were easy for him to overcome. They were merely here for a moment. And the word moment means for an instant. Paul is saying here that the problems of life that seem so heavy right now. The troubles that seem as if they will never end. The burdens we think will break us under the weight are really just here for a moment. He tells that compared with the eternal weight of glory that we will experience when we arrive home in heaven. Everything we face here in life is easy work. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So nothing we face here on earth is worthy to be compared with glory. We ought to come to a point in our lives where we shall say what we're going through now. God will handle it. Why? Because he loved us so much that he promises that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So what we're going through is easy work. Because the Lord said that the burden is on his shoulders. And he will take care of it for us. We are given strength every single day. Nothing we face in this life will last forever. And finally Paul says that everything we face in life has meaning. Paul tells us that our affliction worketh for us. What an amazing statement that is. That everything that we're going through is working for our good. We wonder how anything that's painful, that's senseless, that's going, that everything that causes us pain and affliction is for our good. How could it be that the things that we go through in life is for our good. Yeah, yeah. We wonder how anything that's painful, yeah. anything that's tragic, yeah. can have any meaning yeah. in our life. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that everything that takes place in our lives is all a part of the Master's plan. Yeah. Remember, God didn't save you just for you to have an easy life. Yeah. God didn't save you to make you happy. God didn't save you just to bless you. But God saved you to make you just like Christ. That is his eternal purpose. For Paul said it in Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And who are called according to his purpose. So therefore nothing in your life is meaningless. Therefore, when you're going through your trials, go ahead and give God praise for it. When you're going through your pain, go ahead and give God praise for it. When you're going through your struggles, go ahead and give God praise for it. For God has a purpose for what he brings you through. And I wonder if there's anybody here who can declare what Paul says for he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall
shall be revealed in us. Now, what is there anybody here on today who can't wait for that moment? Who can't wait for that day when Jesus reveals to us what he has in store for us? Now, what is there anybody here who can't wait for that chance to tell the Lord of all the things that we've been through? Who can't wait for that moment? Where we can say, Lord, I've been through the fire. Lord, I've been through the storm. Lord, I've been through my discouraging moment. But Lord, you brought me through. Lord, you made a way. Lord, you brought me to the very moment. What can the plan no does what man? God, you brought me through. Is there anybody here on today? Who can say on oh, today, I will not lose heart. For God can and God will help us make it on our journey home. God can and God will. He will bring us out of anything that we find ourselves in. God can and God will. He will bring us peace. He will bring he will bring us the victory. Well, how will he bring us the victory? One Friday, Jesus hung on old rugged cross. He hung there in pain and in agony. He hung there with our sins in our minds. He hung there just to give us what we need. He hung there on one Friday evening. Hung his head between the locks of his shoulders. And he died for the sins of the world. And is there anybody here on today who can declare I'm so glad on today that Jesus died just for me? But I'm so glad to continue to tell you that the story doesn't end there. They took his body down from the cross. Laid him in a bottle too. Stayed there for three long days. But early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. And with that power, he gives me strength. With that power, he gives me joy. With that power, he gives me peace. With that power, he gives me the victory. And I wonder if there anybody here on today who can declare no matter what I go through, I will not lose hope. No matter what I may be struggling with, I will not lose hope. No matter what may be trying to destroy me, I will not lose hope. He tells me that I am his own. 
and the joy that we share as we carry it in. Let every shall ever know. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who's always there. No matter what we go through in life, God is there. No matter what this world may try to bring us through, God is there. So we should never lose heart. We should never lose hope. And as we enter into this holiday season, we have so many people who are losing hope, who are losing heart, who are going by the wayside, who are stuck in a place where they don't know how to get themselves out of it. We, those who are children of God, must stand and tell the dying world that we have a reason to don't lose heart. We have a reason to don't lose hope. Because we serve a Savior who will give us everything that we need. Now, I wonder if there's anybody here on today who came in feeling like your hope was gone. Came in feeling that there was no way out of your situation. But I come and tell you on today, you don't have to lose heart. You don't have to lose hope. But as long as you have God in your life, Everything will be on our life. And as we stand on our feet now, we want to give someone the opportunity yes, yes. to declare on today, I may not have been living my life the way I should have. Yes, yes. But it's not the end of the room. It's never to me. As long as I give my life over to him, God will make everything all right. Is there one that will give their life over to the Lord on today? Is there one? Is there one? Lord, I believe you came. I believe you died. I believe that you came just for me. Give my life over to you. You will take control. There's a one. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Give us now. He will save you. He will save you.
On that faithful night, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us all eat together. Also, he took the cup and said, drink as often as you, as often as you drink this cup. Do it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. Thank you. 